Hello and welcome to this webinar on navigating the bioanalytical requirements for clinical trials hosted by Agilex BioLabs. So I'll give a brief overview of the Australian landscape and then we'll launch into navigating some of the bioanalytical requirements for clinical trials. So one of the, one of the reasons why many sponsors choose Australia for the clinical trials is a really fast setup and fast speed to getting into the clinic. So a full CMC package isn't required, an investigative brochure outlining all of the preclinical and in vitro supportive data, a clinical protocol and insurance certificate is really all that's needed in order to kickstart the ethics committee process. So everything lies within the ethics committee to make the decision, um, which makes uh, first in human studies really speedy in Australia to get started in as little as four to six weeks. Importantly, Data from clinical trial in Australia are compliant with regulatory agencies throughout the world, including FDA, EMA, MFDS, TFDA, and RCH. And um, those companies that are in the burning rather than earning phase, earning less than $20 million a year, um, can be eligible for the very attractive R&D research um, and development rebate by the Australian government of 43.5%. When it comes to bioanalysis, we can support fast startup for small and large molecule studies. Um, and fast turnaround time for in life data analysis. So what is Agilex Biolabs? Well, we are the leading bioanalytic laboratory in Australia with over two decades worth of experience. We deliver market leading service across both service lines of a small molecule by tandem mass spectrometry and large molecule bioanalysis by immunoassay and, and immunobiology respectively. And through, through, across both service areas, we can support biomarker work and we pride ourselves in timeliness and speed. We're FDA inspected and we are OECD GLP compliant with NAJA ISO 17025 accreditation as well. So we provide an end-to-end -end solution for regulated bioanalysis in the APAC region, focused on pharmacokinetic assays, immunogenicity, neutralizing antibody assays, pharmacodynamics, immunology, and also other bioanalytical assays that we can support through global partnerships, through global laboratories. And I've listed most of these services um, on the slide here, and we'd be happy to um, talk through it in more detail in a separate call. So how do we measure it? So if you consider a subject or a patient in the center top um, that's undergoing a clinical trial, the subject is dosed with a drug, and then blood is taken in serial um, time points from that patient. And we can either separate out plasma or serum for small and large molecule PK analysis, we can isolate PBMCs from the whole blood and culture them uh, and, and measure um, biomarker analysis by means of the MSD or, or Luminex MagPix um, instrument. We can fluorescently label um, the, the cells with antibodies and measure different changes in immune cell subsets or receptor occupancy by flow cytometry. Um, and we can also then culture these um, cells for other means and, and measure uh, various different chemicons, cytokines and biomarkers using these platforms. So the most common platforms used for immunology inflammation really is flow cytometry, which is a very powerful tool for multi-parameter analysis. You can see single changes in, in single cells and rare populations, and the multi-parametric analysis is really good for immune phenotyping, target engagement or receptor occupancy, proliferation and activation and assays, and also some intracellular signaling as well in a multi-parameter fashion. In terms of biomarkers, we really are support for choice in bioanalysis, and we can use the mesoscale sector imager um, um, platform, um, the Luminex, the Quanterix, and ELISA. And there are pros and cons to all of these. Most of them require the specialized equipment from um, the, the, the various different vendors, um, but they are um, in their own rights um, fit for, for the purposes for most bioanalytical studies. Importantly, though, is to establish the context of use and the indicative analytical range required for biomarkers. And the next couple of slides will, will run you through this. Um, but for, especially for healthy volunteer studies where the biomarker cytokine or chemokine might be almost non-existent or um, present at very low levels, you want the most sensitive assay and the most sensitive LLOQ to be able to detect um, whether the, the biomarker is present or in changes, of particular importance if the study drug reduces the levels of the biomarker. So in this um, context, um, assays such as the uh, MSD, the mesoscale SPLEX, um, the Quanterix Samoa platform are very sensitive 
and, and, and I'll show you in a few slides, um, in, in, in being able to lower that um, analytical range and sensitivity. So in higher organisms, the immune system is responsible for surveillance, detection, and eradication of foreign cells and, and pathogens, and it's comprised of a, a complex network of cells which start out as bone marrow-derived hemopoietic progenitor cells, and then differentiate in, in the bone marrow and organs to various different cell types, such as T cells, B cells, and NK cells. Um, these cells um, are recruited to the site of injury or, in, or, or repair, um, and, where, and, and these immune cells become resident um, and they churn out chemotractant stimuli for bringing in additional immune cells, but also in order to um, promote tissue remodeling and, and repair. And I've listed a couple of the immune cells on this slide. Um, and so these immune cells um, release cytokines and chemokines in response to, to uh, invading pathogen or uh, tissue damage. And we thought it would be really interesting to investigate a custom Luminex panel for a 10 analyte um, uh, cytokine uh, panel in uh, patients that had been affected with COVID-19 versus normal healthy serum. So COVID-19, um, which is, a, a, is really driven by SARS-CoV-2 virus infection, uh, which infects the lung and, and, and really promotes a uh, poor outcome due to the enhanced inflammation, tissue damage, and, uh, fluid accumulation, uh, edema, lung failure, and coagulation effects. Um, and so there's, it's associated with heightened release of, um, of inflammatory mediators, um, and many of them are listed um, on this slide, um, which is, has been taken from the literature to support um, the, our panel design. So, um, so what we did was look through the literature and try to identify um, which cytokines and chemokines um, had been found to be upregulated in patients um, that had been infected with COVID-19, um, versus um, healthy population um, where these chemicals and cytokines are generally um, uh, expressed at very low levels. And we came up with a custom templex panel uh, from R&D systems, which included IL-8, GMCSF, interferon alpha, interferon gamma, IL-12, B70, IL-17, IL-1 beta, IL-3, IL-6, and TNF alpha. And so using a standard approach with our Luminex um, assay, um, we um, then measured 41 healthy um, serum only um, uh, individuals and then 45 COVID-19 positive individuals. And these were a mixture of plasma and serum. And so what you find in this slide is that in the healthy population, only IL-8, IL-1 beta and TNF alpha um, were detectable in, in, um, in this, using this panel. Whereas um, for the majority of um, the COVID uh, serum samples and plasma samples, and we see a higher level, um, TED detectable level for all of these biomarkers. Interestingly, in the lower table, we found a considerable difference between um, COVID positive um, plasma and COVID positive serum from the same uh, individual, and we found a much higher level of these biomarkers in serum versus plasma, and that might be due to uh, the various um, compounding or, or um, um, ingredients within the plasma. Um, matrix that, that might be uh, interfering with the assay, such as fibrinogen, etc. So just to have a look at the distribution of those three analytes that we could actually detect in the healthy volunteers uh, study, such as IL-6, IL-1, BJ, and IL-8, we found quite a considerable distribution across the COVID-positive samples, um, and we tried to tease out in a little bit uh, more detail whether this was related to early onset of disease or, um, or some other indication. And our um, investigation actually showed that, that those um, um, subjects that responded quite highly within these assays actually had been diagnosed and, and, and bled quite early on. So we purchased these samples from um, a, um, a repository, so they were commercially available um, samples, and we could um, actually stratify the, the results based on, on the information that we got from our supplier. So the take home message is that there's quite a bit of variation, and the variation is probably due to when the, the um, sample was actually taken from the patient based on when their, their first diagnosis of, of onset of, of COVID positivity um, result. So um, the take home message from the, this little slide is um, the fewer biomarkers were detected in the healthy matrix, which really comes down to the selection of the platform for, um, 
for the appropriateness of, of the clinical trial. So the question really should be, um, what biomarkers are we interested in um, for our clinical trial? And what changes do we expect in that population? And what is the study drug going to do? Is the study drug going to reduce these levels? In, 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 in that regard, we would then want the most sensitive assay with the lowest allele Q to be able to detect any changes. Um, and, um, and so um, just looking at our panel and the options available through the, the uh, three different platforms that I've mentioned, um, you can see that um, there is quite a difference in the allele Q in terms of P gram per mole across all the different options. MSD have an, a more sensitive SPLEX assay, which is now available which, with a much lower um, allele Q, almost similar or lower levels in some aspects than the Quanteric Samoa platform. Um, and that we really, in order to detect in our current circumstances, um, anything in the healthy volunteers, we would have needed to look at either the SPLEX or the Samoa platform in order to um, get detectable levels. So the platform of choice and the assay of choice is really important when you're designing the study. The allele Q is important considerations. And the take home message of this little study was that we really needed more subjects, but also a more sensitive assay. Um, as always, we're um, contactable at the following address, um, and we'd be more than happy to engage with you in order to uh, enable you to learn how we can deliver your next project. Thank you.